Alright then, one of the things that's cool about this here neck, it actually has a little adjustability on it. I think there's a screw here. You can turn and adjust that a little bit. A little wiggle rim, I guess you could call it. Anyway, I got my rod attached. And I kind of sharpened up the end of it there a little bit. And I'm just going to sit this down here about like this. And I'm going to get a good eyeball on how I think that neck angle ought to be. And this is the part that you just... They ain't, you can't read in a book or make a measurement or nothing to figure out exactly how this part needs to be. You just have to kind of figure it out. And you know, can't figure it out no other way that I know except looking at it. That looks straight. Mm, not exactly. That looks a little better. Now the ideal thing right now would be if I could hit the bottom of this can and hold this all right where it is. But that's a little hard to do because the bottom of the can is on the floor and I can't turn it over without losing my angle. And that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift it up and sort of let it fall to the floor like this. What I want is I want that thing to make a little dent in the bottom of there. Like that. You see that little dent in the bottom of there? Oh, that's just lovely. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to try to hold this. And I'm going to take me a hammer make that dent a little bigger. Like a hole. Like a real hole. Oh, look at that. Look at there. Dang. Now I just look at that neck angle. Don't that look about right? Mmm. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. So, I got me a... Uh, I got me a washer and a nut here. There's my washer. I wonder where my nut went. Lost my nut. Dang, I hate when that happens. And I'm going to need to make me a fork. Uh, for a tailpiece. What would I do with that? Okay, I have to go find it. Dang, I say. Okay, I located my nut. So, I'll stick this back on here. Put my washing my cater right there and my nut on here right here. I might decide to grind off a little bit more of this piece sticking out the bottom end after I finish this up. I'm using my hand-powered air wrench here. Ooh, just look at that. Wang, 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 wang. I think that'll work. Now, what I might do is tighten this up and then set my fork out beyond that because it's going to be pretty deep in there otherwise. I'll go get me a wrench. You know what a wrench is? That's the place where they keep horses. I got one out in the shed there, I'll be right back. Alrighty then. I was trying to remember which banjo this is. I number my banjos and sign them. I think the last one I made was number 11. This fella got in touch with me and asked me if I'd make him one. I did. I actually went back and checked my videos. You know, it's been since August of last year that I made one of these. So I really hadn't made one in quite a while. So if that was number 11, that would make this number 12, and then make the next one I'll make number 13, which should be a special banjo. And I got an idea for number 13, uh, but I can't talk about it because it's going to be a surprise. So, with that said, that's all I'm going to say about that right there. I'm going to get my neck angle just right. This is probably the only really important part about doing this is getting the neck angle right. You get the neck angle right, everything else is fairly easy. Well, I don't know if that'll work. Depending on how high my string is, it might work. It's trying to pull down inside that lip. And it's okay as long as the lip is not so big that it makes, you know, if it makes a string buzz. If the lip is so big it makes a string buzz, that's a problem. We need some stringage on this baby now, and uh, I think the next thing to do probably would be for me to make me a tailpiece. That's what I think.